Setting a mood is everything when it comes to drawing a background or environment, but it can be tricky to do, especially if you don't know where to start. But by understanding color and observing real life environments, you can make beautiful, awe-inspiring backgrounds. In this video, I'll be going over my artistic process from the drawing one scene in different moods live stream and giving you tips for how you can add different moods and atmospheres to your environments. The poll for this live stream was the setting I'd be drawing multiple versions of, and you all voted for a cottage in the woods. It took me a couple of tries to get what I wanted, but I ended up with a cute A-frame cottage at the edge of a forest filled with very tall, bushy trees. The A-frame ended up looking a little wibbly when I flipped the canvas, but like, it, it's okay, we can pretend it's fine. As I was drawing the initial background, the first mood I worked with was a cozy or daytime energy. When we think about cozy atmosphere in the daytime, we think about a warm sun, maybe a couple of clouds, and just a lot of warm, vibrant colors in general. The sun gives off a warm, very light yellow glow, so I made sure all my hues had that light twinge of warmth to them. I wanted to keep my greens and browns nice and saturated, and I made the house's roof red as a nice pop of contrast. Even though my shadows were cool, I still made sure to add a little bit of subsurface scattering on the white face of the house and the roof just to breathe a little bit of life into it. A single tone shadow is a flat shadow, and we never want our shadows to look too flat. Now, rather than redraw that entire scene, I just copied the entire layer and moved it over to the side to work on the next mood. This was really easy for me since I was working on a single layer, but if you're smarter than I am and we're working on multiple layers, I'd recommend putting them all into a folder and copying that. It's up to you and your workflow whether you want to merge them all or keep all of those layers as a folder. This next mood that I wanted was still a cozy mood, but this time I wanted a sleepier kind of cozy. If we think of the first illustration like a cafe in a bustling city kind of cozy, this one is like curled up in a blanket by the fire kind of cozy, if that makes sense. Thinking of that, I wanted to shift the time of day to golden hour, the time of day when you start to wind down and get cozy in your home after work or school. The easiest way to do this was to create a gradient map, where your program will apply different hues to the selected layer depending on the values the initial colors have. To make sure the gradient map works, copy everything you want to have a gradient map applied to, merge it so it's one flat layer, and convert that into your gradient map. It's in a different place for all programs, but in Photoshop, it's under Image Adjustments Gradient Map. Applying that as a low opacity multiply layer gives you a nice warm orange glow. I adjusted some of the hues so that we could bring back the contrast, and I was all set. If you'd like to support the channel and the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon for working files, behind the scenes posts, and discounts on our class offerings. The third mood I wanted was something spooky, and nothing's a better spooky time than the night, so once again I copied the layer and got started. This time I added a gradient map made of only blues and purples for that classic Halloween-like spooky vibe, and added not only a multiply layer to darken the composition, but a hue layer at a low opacity as well. Hue layers change the color of a piece overall. Artists tend to use this kind of layer, or the color layer, when adding color to a value painting. This gave all of my colors a more purple, desaturated twinge by comparison to the bright, vibrant look of daytime. I also decided to add fog to the ground to really sell that spooky look. The final mood I decided to do was a sadder, more melancholic mood. I decided to go with the classic sad setting, a gloomy, rainy day. Despite it being daytime, clouds cover the sun, so the entire piece gets a grayish-blue gradient map set as multiply in hue layers. Desaturated colors tend to lend well to sadder moods, so I kept this in mind when choosing the colors for the gradient map. To add rain droplets, I lightly spattered the canvas with white dots and used a motion blur to make them look like rain. I painted on a few raindrop ripples to the ground, and I considered this one done. If you'd like to check out this speed paint in real time, check out the original livestream replay. And if you'd like the working file for this livestream, it's available on our Patreon. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.